Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. What's going down, brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know, as, as always, I just come off a, a call with Inner Circle, guys. Oh, my God. All of them on there are on the verge of had their best year ever. Woo! How awesome is that? That is awesome. Uh, no surprise across, that group of across guys. Across the territories as well, right? So it's not just like, oh, I've had a record. I've made the most amount of money. Cause it's not, you know, that's not how they rank success. It's how they've done it in a leveraged manner. And is it in alignment? And it, in terms of when I say alignment, what I mean is that they feel on purpose, right? And are they actually really sitting in the seat of being an owner of their company where they've got their time back and it's leveraged and they're leading and they, you know, work it basically living from the inside out. I don't need to go through all the, the, the symptoms of living from the inside out. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. It is, it is. And so, you know, for guys that don't know the inner circle is our one year mass or one of our advanced one year mastermind groups. Uh, it's guys that have already been through the activation method, which is our, our first primary program. And they continue on with us uh, because they're getting those results. And the five territories, because you mentioned that the guys are getting success in all the five territories. Those five territories, guys, as a reminder, is self, health, wealth, relationships, and business. And wealth's not just about money. Money, it's about abundance, right? Wealth can be about time. It can be about money. Uh, so it encompasses all of those. I think it's just important to remind the guys because, you know, Tim, I don't know about you, but I forget we've done our gosh, almost 500 episodes, I think. I don't even know where we are. And we forget, we almost, you and I think, okay, we're covering all these things and guys are asking us questions and to cover topics we've already covered. And I just forget that people don't go back and listen to the old ones. And why would you per se, if you did, you know, if you didn't know. So anyway, those are the five territories <laughs> and that's what mm -hmm. the inner circle is all about. So I'm, I'm not surprised those guys are crushing it. They've They've really flipped the script on, you know, the programming inside their minds and the way that they do stuff. We talk about uh, one destination and two paths. And I think we did a whole podcast on this subject. And if you've seen a diagram where Tim, Tim or I have presented this, and we presented it at events. And I think we've done it on live trainings where you can imagine that there's one destination all of us are trying to get to. And that's the wolf, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, I believe, uh, what the acronym for WOLF stands for. But the destination is the powerful man, right? That's where our destination we're all trying to get to. And the path on the left is the one that most of us start at, right? It's hustling. It's grinding. Uh, we want to get the new car, the new house. We, we fall into the trap of chasing the woman, right? We're chasing money. And it always leads to really uh, distractions. It leads to unfulfillment, and we don't quite get there. Well, meanwhile, there's another path and we've seen people on this other path and this other path is ease and flow. And uh, that's the path these guys are on. And when you look at these guys from the outside, they have it all. They literally have it all. And you think, ah, they must be cheating. They must be cheating at the game or, or we make up all these stories about them. Or at least I used to when I was on the, the path of hustle and grind. And you get to meet these guys and they're just great guys that, you know, they've worked on themselves and they figured it out. And they've used the tools and the processes. And uh, we'll talk about some of those today. Yeah, for sure. Um, and what I want to talk about <clears throat> today, Doug, is the idea of being a wolf. And uh, this is inspired by uh, a coaching session I had with one of the men last week. And we were talking about, okay, so how are you embodying being the wolf, right? Versus the deer. And the deer, for you guys that don't know, is <clears throat> defend, excuse, explain, and react, right? So when you're confronted with, let's say you say that you want to go somewhere or do something, hey, I want to go, I'm going to go work out tomorrow morning. And um, your wife may then turn around and, well, you're working out again? And you start to defend yourself. Well, you know, or excuse yourself, or explain, or react. Basically, that they're all symptom of, symptoms of insecurity. And when you're insecure for a the effect that has on a, the woman in your life is she feels unsafe because she doesn't feel that she can emotionally trust you, right? Whereas wolf on the other side is wise, open, loving, and fierce. And this gentleman who I was sp speaking to last week, amazing man, wise, super wise, is, is so 
uh, the insights that he has that he shares with the other men and himself, the way he navigates his journey is uh, admirable, really is. Open, he's very open-minded, open to feedback, open to looking at himself. The way he looks at things is, as, it's, as it says, a very open perspective. And he's also very loving as well, the way in which he, he's loving and, and supportive towards his kids towards his wife, towards his friends, the other men in his life. He's, he's an amazing guy. And that's where part of his loving nature was meaning that he wasn't being as fierce as he could be. And what this meant is he then wasn't holding people in his life accountable. Let's say it was in a business deal and someone may be paying him late. Or let's say it was someone in someone else in business who... Maybe he wasn't doing what they said they were going to do, right? Ah, it's okay. It doesn't matter. He wasn't really taking... There's an opportunity, let me say a different way. There's an opportunity for him to really take control and apply a little bit more ferocity, ferociousness in his life. And this doesn't mean he goes and, and starts being a dick and being this chest-stumping alpha. That's not what this is about. It comes from a very calm and grounded place. So what I want to talk about, Doug, is this idea of being fierce, the F in what it means to be a wolf. And how do you, as, as a man, apply that, right? What does it mean to you to be fierce? And then how do you draw on that inside of you and apply it in your life? And one other thing there, what effect <laughs> does that then have on the people around you, in particular, your wife? Yeah, this is a great question because, you know, when you look at the definition of fierce, right? I'm going to read a couple of these definitions so people can see it. And we'll talk about what it means to us when we say, you know, the F in wolf is fierce. Uh, the definitions from uh, Miriam Webster is violently hostile or aggressive in temperament. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, given to fighting or killing, marked by unrestrained zeal, uh, hmm. extremely disappointing or intense. Furiously active or determined, wild and menacing in appearance. And then what the informal definition is here in this dictionary, oh, as a pop-up just comes up onto my screen, of course, is having or expressing bold confidence or style. Mm. Now, when we talk about fierce, it's more of that informal definition, having or expressing bold confidence or style, but also uh, for, uh, ferociously active or determined. Now... <laughs> When we look at the way a lot of men, you know, try to navigate this world, and a lot of us guys are trying to figure out in modern times, what does it mean to be a modern man now? You know, it's different than when our fathers were coming through up the ranks. Um, you know, we have different roles and responsibilities, especially in a marriage. And so what some guys do is they swing the pendulum to the opposite end and they use fierce or ferocity and they become jerks. They become dicks and they... You know, they're starting fights, physical fights. Um, they're going out there and they're just pushing their weight around, so to speak. You know, men by nature, because we have testosterone, we're bigger and stronger than um, the women, than most of the women in our lives. And I'm going to say 10 times out of 10, but, you know, nine times out of 10, I'll just say that because there's some guy out there whose wife's bigger than him. And I get that, you know, it happens. But most of the time, us as men are going to be bigger and stronger than our wives. And so when we exert this physical dom dominance with aggression, it scares our wives. It scares the women in our life. They don't feel safe and protected, you know, because we are so external of ourselves in that energy. And that's not what we're talking about when we talk about being fierce with the wolf. It's the exact opposite. But yet that's the way most men believe that they need to be. And so guys will try this on, right? They've been the nice guy for so long screw this. This isn't working. I'm putting my foot down. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the opposite of that. I'm going to be the opposite of that nice guy. And they become a jerk and that doesn't work either. And so they're stuck between, well, do I be a nice guy or do I be the jerk? And well, I might as well just be the jerk. And it gets them in, in almost twice the trouble and they just can't figure it out. And they get frustrated and they get angry and it, it, it turns down. And that's not what mm -hmm. this guy that you're talking about, um, you know, I, I'll just call him by his nickname, maybe, because I know you're talking about, but that's not what he's doing or talking about either. Yeah. And I just want to get clear on that definition, Tim, because 
so many men, and I've been in this situation where you were, I'm the, the nice guy for so long, trying to figure out how to get out of that nice guy mentality, I guess. And so I, I swung the pendulum too far the other way. And, you know, you can lose friendships, you can lose people's respect. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong with being overly fierce, the jerk. And you had something really cool that you said, um, what, what needs to come with being fierce. And I'll let you touch on that. Yeah, and I think the, the the pendulum also works the other way as well, right? Because there's guys that come to us that in the past have had the fierceness display by being a jerk. They've calmed it down, and then they become like to your point, they become a bit of a pushover. Yeah, and then but what happens is they know they are letting people push the boundaries with them. They aren't saying anything because they don't know how to say anything in a healthy calm, controlled manner without essentially losing the shit. So they just start to resent. They resent themselves. They resent the people in their life who were walking all over them. But you know, you train, you train people how to treat you at the end of the day, right? So if you are then going to allow people to, you know, not uphold their side of agreements or maybe even not set any agreements with people, you don't have boundaries with people in your life, be it your wife, be it your friends, be it your coworkers, then inevitably you can't resent them and, and be surprised when you start to get pissed off. And that that then comes out in random ways, like a, a short word to your kids one night. And you're like, well, well, that's out of character. Where's that come from? When really it's because you're, you're annoyed. You're annoyed at yourself. And just before we uh, talk about what's needed before the fierceness, I just want to read out a couple of the definitions that the guys shared in uh, in workplace. So I asked this question to the men in workplace, what does fierce um, mean to you or being fierce? Uh, false of nature, he said fierce. Firstly, what a word. For me, the word fierce instills a lot of passion on what I stand for as a man. And holding on to that power, not from a dominance or overpowering standpoint as such, but as I'm the guy, you won't walk over me. But if you do, I'm going to let you know. From a relationship standpoint, being that lighthouse that will never flinch or fall. I love that. Um, one of the other men, uh, fierce to me is going after what's mine and taking it. Not because I'm an asshole, but because it's mine. Leaning in when it's uncomfortable and being present enough to consciously make that decision. Lastly, I'd say fierce also applies to being the protector. Instead of taking, in this instance, you are protecting because what you've created, you own. Um, and then uh, Chief, it, the guy that uh, I was on the coaching session with, Fierce is powerful without having to say he is powerful. When he speaks, people listen. He doesn't bark often because people respect his bite. Oof. And then uh, one more. To me, being fierce means standing your ground and sticking up for yourself when people try to impede on you in some way. But by doing it in a way that is calm and assertive, not backing down from the challenge or the shit test or whatever you want to call it, is standing tall in the face of whatever it is and not backing down from it. It's the way to assert healthy dominance over whatever it is that's stepping on your toes. I love it. Um, so in order to be fierce, obviously Wolf, wise, open, loving, fierce, there was a comment made by uh, one of the women on our team, which I found really interesting because uh, it was her take on it as well. And she was saying, well, you know, I, I totally agree with everything you're saying here. And for a woman, it's really important that if a man's going to be fierce, what's highly attractive is when he is wise, open, and loving as well, or even before he is fierce. So just touching on that, Doug, I mean, what, what, what do you think when you hear that? I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, think of the WOLF acronym. Um, we already talked about DEER, but WOLF is WISE open, loving, and fierce. And to truly be fierce and powerful, in my mind, you have to also be willing to be open. Because when you're open, you're willing also to be hurt, attacked, or what have you, right? Most of us walk around with these walls in front of us wearing a mask, or we, we, you know, they talk about it in relationships like put down your swords, right? When you and your wife are fighting. Well, if you're the wolf, you're open, right? When you're open and loving, you're wise, right? Because you're doing it. That's the wisdom part. <laughs> you're open and loving. 
you, that ferocity is actually a protection. The woman feels like she's being protected by somebody that she can cherish. She can trust the man in this situation because when you're open and loving, then she can see your power, but she can also feel the energy of which you're, you're standing in, which is one of protection one, that you're going to take care of her, not hurt her. Yeah. And it's in that place that she can surrender into you, right? Exactly. Yeah. You're creating the space to allow her to melt into you. And this is where we talk about polarity sometimes, right? You get two magnets together and if it's got the same polar attraction, they're going to repel each other, right? That you can't stick them to each other, but you need that opposite polarity. And so you need to have the masculine and the feminine. And so masculine doesn't just mean strong. It means wolf, wise, open, loving, and fierce then the woman is allowed to surrender into her feminine nature. And that is super sexy if you can bring that to any woman, not just you know your wife for sure, but as Mo said, this woman's name's Mo, she said, it's just sexy. And you'll notice when you're doing this, this is what guys say all the time when they, after they go through the program, is not only is their wife changing the way she's acting around him, but everybody is. Like he'll go to Starbucks and the women there are being much more receptive to him because they can feel the energy that he's giving off. It's power, but it's it's a power they can trust. It's a loving power. It's a masculine energy that they can surrender into. So it's, it's like, a you got to imagine, <laughs> I've, I've heard a couple of women talk, say this, they're like, hey, ever since we were like 10 or 15, guys have been trying to get into our pants, right? So we, we built these mechanisms to defend ourselves against that. It's like an instinct. And it's probably earlier than that for most women. There's an instinct every time they're around men, they don't think about it. They just know that the, there's guys in the room that they are in that are thinking of having sex with them one way or another, except for their father, right? Most, most cases, I know there's some extreme examples out there, but for most cases and guys that have daughters, you know this, like your daughter just, she can be herself. She can be her feminine self around you. Uh, a lot of times, and that can be wild too, but she trusts you and she trusts you're not going to hurt her or anything else. Well, that's what happens that instinct that women have when they're around a masculine man, a truly what we call a powerful man, they can surrender that trust and they can surrender into their femininity and trust that that man is there. He is a solid man who can protect them, can take care of them. And that's sexy for a woman. Mm, yeah, it goes back to the podcast we did, episode 445 on how to hold space. Yeah, yep. Because as soon as you go into deer, it, there is no polarity, right? No. Because if you're defending, you're excusing, you're explaining, you're reacting, all of those are symptoms of insecurity, right? Therefore, if you were, you were wavering, so you're not being a lighthouse, you were wavering and doubting yourself and second-guessing yourself, then... What that forces her to do is do either one of two things, either rise up into her masculine to provide the certainty that you ought to be providing, or she stays where she is and you just, you know, there's, you cancel each other out. Either way, it's not the kind of polarity or situation you want to have. Um, so I'm curious, I mean, let's say we've got some guys listening to this, right? And they're resonating with the idea that they get to apply a little bit more ferociousness in their life. Um, what would you suggest some of the steps could be? Well, I mean, I'm laughing because this is going to sound self-serving, but yeah, and I guess it is to some degree, but it's truly the honest answer is uh, get your ass to an alpha reset. Figure out a way to get to an alpha reset. The best way I've ever seen a guy get into this state fast, the best by far. Um, so that's one, but you know, some guys aren't going to do that or can't do that, whatever the excuse may be, but that's, that's by far the best thing. Get yourself to an alpha reset period. The second thing I would do is really start focusing on the rest of the acronym, the wisdom, right? The W, right? What is it you need to change? What is it you get to change? Take inventory around you. Then let's look at the, let's look at the O open. Are you being open or are you getting triggered left, right, and center? Because if you're getting triggered, like in other words, your wife's upsetting you, she says one thing and then you just fly off the handle, you don't want to get into this mode, right? You're going to be dangerous to yourself and to other people. 
right? Because your anger is going to go in a bad way. It's not controlled yet. And then the L, loving. And I think for most of the men listening to this, and this is going to sound, and I say this because I remember myself 10 years ago when people used to say, what I'm about to say, I'd be like, ah, that just sounds weird. Um, but they need to be loving to themselves first, right? What's your inner dialogue, guys? Are you just beating the crap out of yourselves? You know, or do you truly care about the guy when you look at yourself in the mirror? Um, you know, what's really going on here? Now we can get into F, we can get into fierce. And this is really about setting boundaries. We've done a couple of podcasts on this, Tim, about setting boundaries for yourself, right? And the people around you. And that's part of getting into, you know, your ferocity, I think is the word you used. Uh, it's part of being fierce is having boundaries that are clear and set. You know, when that line keeps moving and you let people step over their boundaries, you technically don't have any. And that's how you can step into it. It's the first place to start is by boundaries and do little things every day that scare you every day. It can be, it doesn't have to be big things. Mm. You know, you don't have to go jump off a cliff, but little things that push you a little bit in the right directions, that scare you in the right directions. And you'll start to step into this energy more and more. And, you know, this is, you'll start to feel this confidence building with inside of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great one. Um, I'm going to add to that. <clears throat> what I'd like you to do is get out a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. On the left-hand side of the piece of paper, write, fuck yes. On the right-hand side, write, hell no. Yeah. You got to know where you are, right? You got to, if you don't know where you are, then how the hell are you going to get to where you're going? No in um, between. I love it. No. Yeah. Get off the fence, right? And then I want you to take inventory. Look at the five territories, right? Think about how you are showing up in those five territories. Self, health, wealth, relationships, business. And write them down. What is a hell yeah? What is a fuck yes? And what's a hell no? Maybe it is in the area of self. You don't have a morning routine. Maybe you're not using the Alpha Rise and Shine. Maybe you have just chosen to not have one. So maybe your morning routine is a hell no. Maybe you don't, don't have a way to decompress at the end of the day. So you're walking through the door in work mode and able to get into the mode of CFO because you're not using the alpha decompression or whatever it may be. So maybe that's the source of, of arguments for you. Hell no, right? Same in maybe it's a pouring yourself a cocktail or two or three on a night to be able to switch off and sedate from the frustration and the stress and the anger. Maybe that's a hell no. The point I'm making is with this is you're going to ha have the tendency to want to put things in the middle. And by you forcing yourself to get off the fence in your own life and look at what's a fuck yes and what's a hell no, you then get to get rid of those hell no's out of your life. Some of them are going to be easier than others. Some of them are going to involve some conversations with some people, I'm sure of it. And what this does by default to Doug's point is it starts to create, well, it leverages the entire of the WOLF acronym. You've been wise because you're taking inventory. You're looking at your life. You're, you're applying the insights you're getting shared with here. And you've been, you've been open, right? You've also been loving because you've been loving to yourself, to Doug's point, to actually take inventory and align your life to be more in alignment with the things that fill you up. Right, because it's from that place of fullness that it's easy to then, or easier to then create the boundaries. Right, lean into what you find uncomfortable. Those conversations with people that are going to be, there are going to be people that are on the hell no, hell no, hell no list. There just is. What you do about that is your choice. One thing that is certainly true is that after listening to this podcast, if you choose to do nothing. You're going to feel worse about it than if you choose to do something because you're aware of it now, right? So obviously how you have those conversations with people is a different, that's more of a tactical thing. So if you're listening to this and you have questions on that, go over to the Powerful Man Facebook group, drop them in there. Uh, Doug and I and uh, some of the other coaches on the team will be happy to give you some assistance in the comments and, and answer that. But either way, guys, like Doug always says at the moment of insight, you've got to take action. Got to take action. Your wife, your kids, your staff, they're all waiting for you 
to show up with just a little bit more ferociousness. Doesn't mean being a dick, doesn't mean being a walkover, but they are waiting for you to be the wolf, take charge, take what, take what is his, like one of the guys shared in what fierce means to him, take what is his and lead the charge. Love it, guys. You heard it from him, the man himself. So gentlemen, what are you going to take action on? Make a decision now. Get off the fence and get into the game. Guys, that's a wrap for us here at the Powerful Man Show. We'll see you next time and have a great week.